We're going to look at today opening up a hatchback vehicle. I'm at a recycle yard in Hohenwald, Tennessee with the Hohenwald Fire Rescue Department. I have Ryan and James and Terry and Steve helping me with this video today so we can show you a, a better way, I think, of opening up a hatchback. You can't go to a parking lot of any size without seeing numerous SUVs and vans and, and things of that nature. And so we need to take a, a better look at, at hatchback vehicles on, on how we can make a better entry into it. What we've done in the past is this. A lot of the times we'll come up, we'll try to make a purchase point along this side, to maybe even get into the light area. A lot of the vehicles now, even all of this, the light area, is all plastic. And so when we start to get into it a little bit, when we start to get into it a little bit, it just wants to tear it. It doesn't want to do what we want it to do, and it makes things difficult. Same way with the bumper. Same way with the bumper. A lot of plastic in the bumpers nowadays. Uh, you can't get a good push-off point of it. And so my thoughts on this and what we've come up with here at our department is to attack it from the hinge side. Just like we did a side door, we're gonna take a look at the hinge side. The hinges on a hatchback are pretty weak. You can cut them with an air chisel, reciprocating saw, cutter has absolutely no problem with the hinges on a hatchback. And so it shouldn't be any problem whatsoever. But we're gonna to try to eliminate the hinges in one evolution and incorporate the hinges in another. So we're gonna start with the, uh, incorporating the hinges to begin with. So I'm going to have James come up here. James is going to come up. He's going to make a cut for me right here. So I'm going to take a look at this back glass. He's going to go straight up from the curvature of the glass. That way we are on the outside of the hinge. Because I want to leave this center part of the upper roof line in the top of the hatchback in place. So I'm going to have him cut here. Then I'll have him going to come over here. Same thing on the curvature. Cut right here. That should force this hatchback to come this way. The advantage to that is it exposes the struts, which is something that we want to be able to expose during our extrication. Once they're exposed, we can cut the strut, the part of the strut that extends so that we can make it out of our extrication scenario. And then we're going to come in, and once this is down, my Ryan come in with a set of spreaders, and he's going to come in and pop that bottom uh, hatch back off that off that tater pin and that should complete the extrication. Okay, as you can see, that came off pretty easy. Worked our spreader tips in there. Always remember to take the plastic off because your spreader tips aren't going to sit on that plastic very long. Got a nice bite on it. If we needed to, we could always have brought the cutters back in and cut the tip right down there at the, at the pin and it would have come off nice and easy. But it worked out good. We've got a big, large opening. In fact, it's the biggest opening on this vehicle. We're going to do things just a little bit different this time. And the reason is, is that the newer SUVs, if you've been looking at the hatchback, have a spoiler that comes off of the back of them. So they'll have, a, have an additional attachment that'll come back and they'll come out, oh heck, they'll come out of 10 inches or so past the rear, uh, top of the rear window. So with that in mind, that makes it a little bit harder to take a cutter and make a cut clear across it. You could use a reciprocating saw, or a lot of those extensions come right off with a halogen bar. Or you can just crump it up a little bit with a with a spreader and then and then go into a cut or just keep spreading the hinges off. So that's something you're gonna have to kind of look at and see how you wanna see how you wanna handle that particular thing. But it's really not that big of a problem.
It's a little harder using the spreaders on the top to get a purchase point um, because of the some of the height of the of the SUV. Some of the SUVs are, are fairly high. That's why it, it's probably better to use the cutting method than the spreading method. I'm just giving you another method just in case you're, you're on a seam and your cutter is tied up and you do want to make entry through the, the hatchback, but this is another method yet that you can get the job done. So we've showed you a couple of methods of being able to remove a hatchback. One was using just only a cutter and then a spreader at the bottom. The other one was to get purchase points at the top using a spreader and a cutter to break those hinges. And like I said before, those hinges aren't so bad enough to where you can use a reciprocating saw or an air chisel to accomplish the same thing. I'd like to thank the men here of Whole Long Fire Rescue for giving me a hand here today. Or, uh, my fire department that I'm very proud of. So like the, the Clayton family recycle yard for allowing us the vehicles to be able to show this to Have a good day.